Now you fulfill a dream and you buy a multi-needle machine, everything's going along perfectly, you're getting past the learning curve, your embroidery's coming out nice, and then bang, you start to do finish hats and your whole world gets turned upside down. Now if that's happened to you, you're going to want to make sure you keep on watching. Now the good news is you are not alone. Every embroiderer has to cross that bridge at some point. As soon as you put that tubular item onto the machine, all the rules of embroidery change. And it happened to me as well, but for me it happened about 25 years ago. I kind of had everything figured out. We had flatbed Tajima machines. I was running high-end production and every minute counts when you're doing production and embroidery and if you're trying to be profitable. And I thought everything was easy from that point on. And then we got in our first tubular machine. And when we put those cap frames on and they actually went on an angle like this and we were dealing with a baseball hat that has a crown and a peak all the rules all of a sudden changed overnight and I had a whole new learning curve to get past again. Now the design that I'm going to be showing you is a design that was posted on our Facebook group and there's really nothing bad about this design and even when I went in and looked at it it isn't digitized terribly. The person who did it actually in my opinion kind of knows what they're doing. They, the objects are clean and everything is pretty good but there's a few small changes that I, I would make and rather than try to edit the file I did re-digitize it and and we'll see if we can get, I guess, a little bit cleaner, better results, and most importantly, better results with regards to production on the machine. So here's the actual sew out, just so you can see it. This is the original file that was sent. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It looks pretty clean, looks pretty good. But let's dive in and take a look at the file on screen. Now I've got their design up on screen and I'm going to run it through the player and do a redraw to see exactly how this sews out. And right off the, the bat I can see that there is a running stitch and this is going to probably do a little zigzag from the center out. And I do respect that because on a curved surface it's basically giving it some underlay and it's sort of matting it down in the area where there's going to be stitches and that is a good preventative measure. Now I would personally have stitched uh, in the ditch. I would have done a couple of running stitches right down the center. Uh, and now it's doing actually underlay underneath of a fill stitch that's going to be going around. And this looks like it was kind of manually done and that's not a problem either. I know that a lot of the, um, I guess, underlay that is within the fills can add stitches, but I probably would have uh, defaulted to a shorter stitch length uh, and maybe not tried to save stitches, but try to give it a little bit more of a foundation. Now they did start from the bottom and moving up and that is awesome because that's the way I would have done it. Although I wouldn't personally have done this fill first because I'm doing the outside fill and then I'm going to leave that whole center area completely open and any stitches that are going to go in there might cause movement to the outside a little bit uh, but it's also potentially going to give you some harder stitches. So I, I probably would have started more from the inside and moved out. Uh, then I can see that it's going to do that and right away it does a satin stitch around the outside and that is awesome. Uh, not personally 100% happy with the choice of the underlay. It looks like there's a center run. I would use at least an edge run with a satin going around a fill because right here where this stitched direction is meeting the same direction as the fill, there's going to be uh, you know, kind of blending or sinking in of threads where everything where everything is going the same direction. So I would definitely use a different underlay and I also would have started at the bottom and moved around to the top instead of the top to the bottom. Now if I keep on going I can see that it did this zigzag here and I guess that was maybe to kind of hold all that in place but again I, I'm, I personally wouldn't have put that there at this point. And then it's doing this uh, lettering and the lettering I can tell is a, uh, it looks like it is a keyboard font, an ESA font, which isn't necessarily bad, but I can tell because of these crossovers and also because it's so small, there's not enough space between the open ends of the stitches. There is a center run underlay, which is good, but it just looks a little bit too dense to be uh, lettering on a baseball hat. 
And the other thing is there's all of these trims and jumps between each of the letters. And looking at the sample that I did run, I can see that, uh, and I know this was run on a 10 needle machine, and I ran it on a 10 needle as well, and it didn't trim and jump between all of these letters. It actually left a thread going across between most of the letters, which doesn't look very clean for production. And if you, your machine does trim, if it's set up to trim between all of the objects, then the problem is you have a lot of downtime on the actual machine because you have uh, you know 120 stitches on average for every trim. So it does all the lettering next, and then it's going to do this blue, which is going in a vertical direction, and then it's going to do these grays, which are going kind of in a vertical direction as well. Uh, they are kind of changing in some strange angles, so that's a little different. Uh, if I do go back, and if I look here as well, to be honest, I would not do a center run with a uh, zigzag. I would always do an edge run to try to keep these more defined. And especially for the next color, it's going to do the black stitches here, going the exact same stitch direction, but again, just doing a center run with a zigzag. There, most definitely, I would want to have an edge run because these going the same direction are just going to sink into each other and they'll start to blur in effect a little bit. So that is something I would change. This fill that's coming up right now, this is actually, should be a fill, but it's a satin stitch with the uh, stitch length turned on to splice after seven millimeters. And I'm not sure why that was done, but I definitely, you know, personally I wouldn't do that as a satin with the uh, splice going on there. And then it does all of these uh, little stars and the stars aren't necessarily poorly done. I can tell that they were kind of digitized using some of the automa automated features of the machine. They kind of look clean on screen, but the problem is they are trimming and jumping between every single little star. So that's a lot of jumps and trims within the design that could have been avoided if they were done manually. And I know I'll probably go in and manually digitize those one stitch at a time. It sounds like it's going to take a while, but it, you know, and it will, but it will be, in my opinion, kind of worth the effects of having it actually uh, you know, do it in one path with no trims. Now, the very last point here, we have a uh, stitch going around, and yes, it does look like this is hopefully actually looking at it. No, I don't think it is. It's just a center run. Again, I would have personally liked to have seen an edge run going around that uh, thick satin border. And then we are pretty much done. So this design right here to this point has 10,568 stitches. If I want to go in and look at the um, design information, I can see that there is uh, eight color changes, 38 trims, and as we said, 10,568 stitches. So I'm going to digitize this, use a little bit of different theory, and we can see if we can kind of adjust these numbers a little bit and make it a little more production friendly, as well as, uh, you know, hopefully visually at least as good, if not a little bit better. Now the first thing I did was I brought in the artwork and I resized it to the exact same size as the customer did. And it's always good to have the original artwork so that you can make sure that you're working with uh, the best quality possible. Now I'm just going to go into a uh, full screen so you can see that there is the design that I did digitized and there's the artwork that I was given. And I did have to thicken up some of the borders and stuff, and that's exactly what the other digitizer did. So, like I said, for the most part, the other design was pretty well done. Everything was nice and clean, and the finished stitch off wasn't necessarily bad in any way. Uh, from a production standpoint, for finished hats, I think what I did will make a little bit more sense, and I'll just go through it the same way as I did the other, where I'll bring in the player, and we'll kind of redraw through this. Now you're going to see the first thing is, I did do the same thing. I brought in a you know, separate color at the very beginning, and I went up and down this actually three times, and I stitched in the ditch. And that way, if you do line up the needle um, you know, start position, which should be the center seam of the hat, then it's going to stitch up and down about three or four times, fill in that ditch, and that way things won't necessarily fall in and have to stitch their way out. 
and that is the first color that is done. Now then the next color that I did after that, I did the fill on the inside. I started from the bottom and I'm moving up. I do have some underlay and it's at about a 15 degree angle. I did not keep a completely horizontal angle on this fill. And the reason why is I had those straight lines coming in afterwards and I didn't want the stitch directions to completely or directly oppose each other and see some gaps in between. Because if I'm dealing with a black fill and this is on a neon hat, I would see separation between the stitches if they opposed and I don't necessarily want to see that. So this is a bit of a safety precaution. Now here I do that fill from the bottom to the top and then I'm going to come in right away and do these little stars and again I manually digitize them one stitch at a time but I did them so that they are literally stitching from here and doing each of these all the way through and when I'm done, there is no trims and jumps anywhere in this entire object. Was there a lot of you know manual objects to digitize? Yes, there was, but it's going to stitch out well. Now here I did an edge run. I didn't really need a zigzag because this is a fill stitch. I know it's not going to move much. And I do have extra pull compensation on that because I do know that on a cap it's going to pull in a little bit. And even though on screen it looks a little thicker, when it separates those lines will come out a little thinner. And if you look right here, actually I do have some little zigzags right on this one here. When I get right to here at this point, you see some zigzags at this side. And the reason why is this stitch direction is going to go this way. There is going to be another stitch that's going to oppose it. And I wanted to make sure that if it did pull those apart, I wouldn't see any gapping there. And I continue to go up to the top, do all of these areas, and then I'm going to do the blue which is going to be this one color right here. Again, zigzags on e either side. So if they do decide to separate a little bit, I won't see the black underneath. I'll actually see some blue thread. And then I go to the other side. And once I get to here, then I'm ready to start the next part of the design. Now, one thing I want you to look at really quick is these zigzags that I put here, 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 and here. Those are because this stitch direction is going to be horizontal. It is a circle, so I don't want to have it at an angle and really kind of skew the shape. I do want it to be in a horizontal stitch like I can see now, but these areas are areas where there is going to be a directly opposing stitch angles. I'm going to have a satin stitch border going around this, and when it separates, again, I don't want to see the cap show through. So I have my underlay in place. I continue from the bottom to the top and I continue around here and when it gets to the top it's going to start the next object but when you see it start the next object which is going to right away finish off and do the black stitching here it started from the bottom not from the top but from the bottom and I am going to use a edge run so there is an edge run underlay stitch so that it's keeping that stitch nice and defined not just a center run and once it does that object then I will finish at the bottom and this is where my um, lettering because it's manually digitized I'm going to start right here on my lettering and you're going to see that I am starting at the S and I'm doing this and I'm leaving gaps at the top and the bottom that's giving me a little bit more control but watch this I'm traveling the underneath of the border that's going to finish so I have a whole bunch of traveling stitches so that again is almost you know nine one two three four five six seven eight nine nine or ten unnecessary uh, jumps or trims between these letters that are essentially going to be hidden by the satin stitch border going around the outside so in theory I've really tried to keep this you know design going from the center out and I've tried to keep it from the bottom up and I've tried to keep the stitch directions you know in place so that it's not going to distort the shape but I have tried my best to reduce the amount of trims within the design so that I'm going to get a production friendly you know design and I know that this design is being used by a you know a person who is running embroidery as a business and if I can reduce you know 20 plus trims out of a design that is actually money 
that I'm saving, it's money in my pocket. So now it just finishes this, and then it's going to go back to the center point, and we are done. Well, I hope some of those little modifications kind of made sense to you. And keep in mind that this is just one digitizer's opinion. There's many ways to do a design, and odds are, if you give me a design to do, and then a year later give me that same design, I'll probably have you know things slightly different from one to the next. So there is multiple ways to do things correctly. Now, the difference between those two files, aesthetically, I, I do think mine looks a little bit better, but that could be a matter of opinion. But the real difference is the stitch count, which isn't drastic. Mine had 9,741 stitches. The other one had 10,568. So little bit of a difference with stitch count, but the real difference was with the trims in the design. I had 10 trims total in the entire design, and the other one had 38 trims. Now, if you take 120 stitches, which is the downtime between your machine slowing down, you know, trimming, moving over, uh, you know, starting up again, slow speed, and continuing on, and you times each of those trims by 120, in essence, you're adding about 1,200 trims on my design, bringing the total stitch count up to about 10,900 stitches. And on the other one, if you times 120 times by 38, that is about 4,500 additional stitches. So again, the, the stitch count that you see on your screen isn't necessarily the runtime that's gonna happen on your machine. You have to calculate all of that downtime as well. Now the color changes were exactly the same. They had eight colors, I had eight colors. So it really is a matter of how the design runs, how it feels. Obviously, if I do take the designs and here is the original, and I start to feel the back of the design, and especially where all those little stars are, there is a little bit more buildup, and you can see a lot of little threads on the back because of all those unnecessary trims and jumps. Where this one, this is the one that I did, and again, you know, aesthetically, they're both pleasing. I, I think that, you know, you could look at either one, and somebody might actually say, hey, this one looks better. But as far as how the back looks, how there is less trims and jumps, how it feels, and how it's going to run on the machine, that really is the proof, because the proof is always in the stitching. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you want to make your embroidery life easier, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus, if you want to try Hatch Embroidery software free for 30 days, or you already own Hatch and you'd like to download a free ESA font for it, click one of the links in the description below to learn more now. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.